Hey everybody, this is Aaron from Aaron's Audio Corner. For the longest time, I've been wanting to do a little tour of my movie room, but a few things have stopped me. Number one, it's never clean. Yeah. I took this week off from work and been working on trying to clean up the attic space. Got some stuff moved out of my movie room, and I thought now's an opportunity to go ahead and kind of walk around and give you all a tour of you know what my movie room consists of and kind of the history of it and things like that. But Keep in mind that this was all filmed with a GoPro because I tried to film it with this camera, but it was just too jerky. So the problem with the GoPro is there just really wasn't enough light and it's not perfect. You know, it's not anything that I would consider production quality, but I think it's better than nothing and kind of gives you an idea of me as a person, you know, what I enjoy and what I've been through and what I've gone through to kind of get my movie room set up. Now, this movie room is pretty much all DIY. The baffle wall is built by myself. I built all the enclosures. I run an active speakers put together by myself. I, I'm using DSP to run the active speakers in some cases, and you'll see what I mean in a little bit. Let's see what else here. I built the seating, or didn't build the seats, but I built a platform for the seats. Uh, I even built the, the stand, I guess, that holds all of the components out of two by fours, a couple of pieces of scrap wood, and some perforated metal from Lowe's and then painted it black. That thing is legit. It ain't going nowhere. It's freaking heavy. But I was pretty proud of that at the time. Now, this is all done about seven years ago or so, and there really hasn't been any updates to it. If I were to do everything over again, there are certain aspects that I would change. Number one, the side surround speakers stick out a little bit too far for me. I would go with in walls if I were to, to do that again. I would also really like at some point to revisit my baffle wall because when I built it, I was kind of in a rush to get some stuff done. And if I'm being honest, I got about 80% complete. And then I thought, oh yeah, I'm right there. And then I just went ahead and rushed it and got the last 20% done. And it was kind of sloppy. I'm not too proud of the way it looks. Uh, as long as the lights are off, nobody cares. But as you see, when you go behind the scenes, uh, things are kind of crazy back there, but it's functional. So, hey, that's that's what we really want in the end. Uh, there are some other ideas that I've kicked around before, maybe about actually building a full, complete false wall and putting in-wall speakers in that. But there's this aspect of nostalgia because I'm running speakers that came from the old car mic in town. Before they closed down, they sold off some of their stuff to a local church and the church guy was selling some of the stuff back off when the church bought them out. And... I bought some of that stuff. So I'm literally listening to the same speakers that I listened to as a kid when I would go to the movies. And you just, you can't beat that for a nostalgia factor. I mean, yeah, they may not be the greatest thing ever, but they get stupid loud and they have the crazy nostalgia factor of being the same things that I listened to when I went to the movies as a kid and as a teenager. That's pretty cool. That's, to me, that that hits right here. So I watched back this video and realized... I didn't tell you exactly the setup I'm running. So it's a 5.2 setup. I'm not running Atmos or Oro or anything of that nature. It's, it's nothing too complicated. The reason for that is I really just don't spend a lot of time in the movie room. I would like to maybe upgrade it at some point, but I just don't have a need for that right now. And for me to do that, I just, you know, like everything in life, if you want something, you need to be able to justify the purchase reason, right? And right now, the majority of my time is spent creating this kind of content, testing speakers, reviewing speakers, and then we're just constantly on the go as a family. I mean, my day job, my wife's day job, my kids got all sorts of after school activities. So at this very point in my life, most of the time that I have that's free is spent doing this. Or if I do have the opportunity to watch a movie, it's usually from the seat of my couch with AirPods on, so I'm not bothering my family. And maybe that'll change when summer rolls around, I'll, things will free up a little bit more, but that's just how it is for, for my family at this very point in time. But I can tell you that we enjoy the heck out of the movie room when we do have the opportunity to use it. And maybe one day I will upgrade it some more. With that said, I'll go ahead and kick things off, roll it over to the GoPro video, and then I'll uh, walk you through the movie room, give you a little bit of a tour of it. And hopefully again, it gives you an appreciation of you know my background and maybe even me as a person. So we'll uh, see you on that one. Let's begin the ascent. So the stairways that go up to the movie room have a couple of posters in them that I cherish deeply, right? So 
The 1989 Batman, this movie just, to me, is one of the best movies of all time. I mean, I, I know that may be overstating it to some of you, but I, man, I love that movie. Then going up, another favorite of all time for me is The Goonies, right? So these posters are actually framed in a non-reflective glass that were going to actually go in my movie room, but I wound up doing something else instead on the side walls. So they got moved out to the hallway. And now we've got my Back to the Future poster and another just classic, right? I mean, you, uh, Back to the Future, are you kidding me? You can't beat Back to the Future. So those three kind of set the mood. And then my wife bought me this entrance thing a few years ago, and I thought it was kind of neat. Got it from Hobby Lobby. Hobby Lobby has all sorts of stuff like that. So if you're interested, check out Hobby Lobby for some cheap little tchotchke type things. All right, now we come into the movie room. And right now I've got a preview up for Cobra Kai, the new season, which comes out in a couple days. Uh, the screen is about 120 inch diagonal, uh, give or take, you know, I don't remember the exact dimensions from it. And then we're going to walk back here. You can see I've got the projector. This is a Sony HW40ES. And also we'll point out this Hum X. I'll flip the lights on a second and I'll show you that again, but that thing's awesome. Uh, going over here, I've got my little arcade one-up machine with Ninja Turtles. And man, this is so awesome. I love this thing. Uh, I would really love to have the original Ninja Turtle machine from back in the day, but man, they're like super expensive. Let me flip the lights on here to get better lighting in here now. That should help a lot. Yeah, so the original arcade machine that I want, that I would love to have, they're like $1,700 minimum in working condition. And if you want really good condition, you're probably 2,500 bucks to maybe 3,000. They command such a premium. So the arcade one up, I think I paid 400 bucks when it came out. They've gone up a little bit since then with some of their other models, but I just love it. Four player, you've got Turtles in Time on here as, re as well as the original uh, arcade machine version. And it's just, man, it's just so cool to have some bit of nostalgia for me. Speaking of nostalgia, this is what I call my vinyl corner. And I've got three vinyl album frames that I've, that I've got set up here. Uh, these frames actually came from Hobby Lobby as well. They're dirt cheap. So if you're looking for something, you can pick them up there. But I've got Fleetwood Mac Rumors, Michael Jackson Thriller, Huey Lewis and the News Sports, three of my all-time favorite albums. And in here, which I haven't used in a while, this is the YouTube, YouTube? U-Turn Orbit. I have bad setup. I've got a Grado cartridge. I think it's a black cartridge. So I upgraded a little bit, but honestly, I rarely even use this thing. I've got a few albums still sealed up and I don't think they're really worth anything. That's not why I'm keeping them sealed. It's just, I hate to crack them open. This is the original Batman soundtrack with Danny Elfman. And man, it's just, oh, it's just one of my favorite. And this picture is such a classic. I mean, such a classic to see that picture. Uh, Matchbox 20, another one of my favorite. Uh, Prince, it's a reissue. So like I said, they're not necessarily worth anything. I mean, I, I think the Batman probably goes for maybe 80 bucks. That's not why I'm keeping them sealed. I just don't want to open them yet. Uh, Lionel Richie, Beach Boys. What else we got in here? Uh, the Dire Straits, uh, MFSL version. I've got a couple others in here as well. But those are the main ones that I listen to. I've actually got a lot more albums in this box down here. And the reason they're boxed up is just, like I said, I just don't really have the chance to listen to vinyl. I mean, I spend all of my time creating content, doing reviews. I barely have time to sit down and listen to music. I'm not whining. This isn't a, oh, woe is me. I'm just, that's the facts, right? Uh, in here, we've got the media closet and I've tried to organize it as best I could. But as you can see, there's stuff just kind of laying around. Uh, let me grab a light, this little light, little newer thing. I'll flip this on and make it a little bit easier to see in here. Okay, so on the left, we've got the main stuff. Starting from the top, I've got a little cable, cable TV box. Then I've got the mini DSP DDRC88A for active. And I use this uh, for active processing for my front three-way setup, which we'll talk about in a minute. But when I'm not using that, I will use the built-in DSP of the amplifiers, which we're about to look at. The Adcom GFA 545 is an amplifier that was uh, fixed up and sent to me from a viewer. So uh, he knows who he is. Uh, Jeremy, thank you again for that. The Denon, what is this? 
oh gosh, X4000. X4000. I've had this one for probably seven years now or so. Then I've got a Nintendo Switch. I play with my kiddo. And going down the line, we've got an Oppo BDP103. Put this CD back up there. Then I've got a few stack of crown amps. And like I said, some of the time I'm using these crown amps in active mode. And right now they actually are in active mode. So this 1502, this 1502, and uh, this 2002, left, right, center. And then I can just adjust the gains as needed. Uh, the, the DSP allows me to use built-in bandpass crossovers for the, uh, for the, the front speakers. So I use that for the compression driver and then for the 15 inch midwoofer and then the 2002 at the bottom goes to the dual stereo integrity HT 18 subwoofers that are in four cubic foot enclosures with uh, vent tuning to about 18 Hertz or so, give or take. Then I've got this NES Advantage still in the box that my brother-in-law gave me because he knows I'm a Nintendo junkie. And I've got some random Nintendo stuff in there. Uh, looking over to the side. Well, I've got a bunch of VHS because one day I will go through my VHS and back them up to digital. Then I've got my DVDs, which nobody watches DVDs anymore, but I've got all my original DVDs that are up here. My Blu-ray discs for the most part are downstairs in our living room because that's really the only place that I have to put them. Uh, my most notable ones, let's see here. Goodwill Hunting. Yes, Goodwill Hunting, classic. Uh, I've got Batman, obviously. Got Chappelle Show Seasons 1 and 2 right there. <laughs> Dog the Bounty Hunter. Dragon. Jason Scott Lee. If you guys are Bruce Lee fans, I know it's not necessarily true to his life story, but it's a very entertaining movie, and I love it. I love it. Uh, early 90s, mid 90s, I think. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, I'm seeing Roadhouse. Roadhouse. I got Roadhouse in there, y'all. Roadhouse, classic. So yeah, just a, a, an assortment of movies. Top Gun, The Toy. Uh, yeah, just a bunch of different movies. Over the Top, another classic. Over the Top, gosh, I'm an 80s junkie. And then a lot of these, like My Best Friend's Wedding, I would say that these are my wife, but you know, I like them too. What's really funny is back in the day when I worked at American Eagle, on the weekends, we, my wife and I were dating, we would go to Huntsville, which is the nearest town over that had a Best Buy, and we would load up. I would spend all my, my money on DVDs and just rack up. So that's where all my part-time money went to before I really started um, doing anything in college. So moving around the room, let's see what else we got here. So first of all, I've got Two rows of seats, and these seats are pretty run-of-the-mill seats. They're actually the cheapest ones I could find at the time. I built a riser, and it's got some perforation holes through it. It's filled with fiberglass material, the kind that's safe. I, I can't remember the exact brand. I think it's the Rockwool brand. And yeah, so to me, it's supposed to act as a big base absorber. If I'm being honest, I haven't even measured this setup in years. I don't even remember what it's doing anymore. So I'm not going to try to pretend like it's doing all of that. Um, front row, this is the funny part, right? This is what gets you when you buy cheap seats. See all this is just peeling off this pleather. My dogs have just murdered this seat. This is a primary seat. So it seems like every time I come up here, I have to vacuum and I did vacuum for this video. Oh, speaking of this, check this out. Look, my dogs, more holes in the freaking carpet. Oh my gosh, my dogs are insane. Okay, so now let's start back over here. This is my favorite poster in this movie room. This is my Rocky IV, uh, signed by the artist who, honestly, I don't remember what his name was. I want to say it was Jason something. Uh, number 35 out of 50 artist proof. I got it directly from him. I've seen these go on eBay for a few hundred bucks. I'm never going to sell this poster. I'm just not. I think it's too awesome. Rocky IV, Rocky running up the mountain of uh, Drago. I mean, are you kidding me? That's so awesome. If he dies, he dies. On the side, I've got one of my side surround speakers. It's a JBL. I think it's an 8330A. I can't remember. Uh, this, the story with that, though, is kind of neat. I'm going to save that for a minute. Then moving on to the side, we've got these. They're, they're not posters, but they're kind of posters, right? And the deal is that they are um, absorber panels. So if I pop this off <laughs> so you can see what I've got here. See, I've got this rock wool material right there. And it's about two inches thick. It's the medium density version, so it can stand up on its own. 
And then around it, I've got a border of wood. And then covering the border of wood is a stretchy type material. There's a thread on ABS form. And I'll try to remember to link it here at the bottom where tons of people have done this exact same thing where they built their own panels. And it makes it look like they're actually posters. And that's really cool because it just gives it a little bit of, a, of something different in the movie room. Now, this movie room is about seven years old at this point. So, you know, if I were to do it over again, probably wouldn't put uh, Pumpkin Jack. I would probably keep that. I would probably keep that. Uh, moving on to the other side, you know, yeah, I got to keep the Up because the Up is a classic. Tangled's a classic in my family. I, I think that's a great movie. Zachary Levi, the dude who voices that guy, is also the character for uh, Shazam. It kind of tickles. <laughs> You're dead. The Shazam movies are incredible. And then Pirates of the Caribbean. So, you know, kind of got a good round of it. Now going over to here, Beauty and the Beast. I bought this one for my wife. I think it's just awesome. And what's kind of cool about this is if you look in the shadows, you can see that it's the beast in his, in his human form. And then you've got uh, the clock and the uh, Lumiere and Cogsworth and... Mrs. Potts and the Wilting Rose. I don't know. It's just, to me, that's just a really cool poster. I saw it and I was like, I'm going to order that for her. But naturally, I had to put it up in my movie room. Moving on to the side over here, this is just a, a plethora of things. So we've collected over the years. It just captures everything. I've got a Batmobile from the 1989. I've got a DeLorean with little wings that open up. Popcorn Maker, which we don't yearly use that much, but it's very nice to have. And then I've got a collection of Nintendo games that one day I'll start going through and cleaning up. But these are all ones that I had from when I was a kid and a VCR player. Um, yeah, just old school Nintendo games, new school stuff. It's just it's just all over the place. Let's see here. Oh, yes. So coming back to the Hum X. Now, this is a piece that will effectively knock out ground loops. It's an active piece, uh, so it does have to be plugged in. But I had some really bad ground noise in this room. And the thing is that the two outlets that I have in here are both 20 amp outlets tied to two different breakers, but everything runs off of those outlets. So I couldn't figure out, I mean, even that, even that guy comes to the same, same outlet downstairs in the panel. Uh, I couldn't figure out why I was getting a ground loop. And I tried everything. I tried everything. I mean, I, I made new wires, just everything. XLR cables, I, I went fully... Uh, balanced at one point with a rain RPM 88. That didn't help anything. So I was left to just try this and I paid 70 bucks for it at the time. I think it's still 78, nine, something like that dollars now. And it, man, it was perfect. It did everything it needed to do and it worked. So I'll drop a link uh, to that. If any of you guys are looking for something like that, you can order it from Amazon. If you, if it doesn't work for you, send it back. It's worth a shot. Now we're going to change things up and we're going to go behind the screen because I, what I've got here is a baffle wall and I'll drop a couple pictures in here, but I want to walk back here so you can see what's going on. So on the LCR, I've got from an actual theater in town before it closed down, JBL Pro Audio stuff. So from the theater that I used to watch movies in, I bought some of their old speakers. We're going to walk back here to the behind this wall and check it out. Here we are. So as you can see, we are behind the wall and I'd say it's, I think I built out about three feet. In all honesty, I probably built out way too far. Uh, this was for front heights because before I planned to do a baffle wall, I wired everything up for front heights. Uh, this is, I actually wound up just plugging this into the back and this runs to like a test setup when I want to review speakers up here. I just connect it to a different channel. It just makes things easier on me. JBL 2446J compression driver. Look at the size of this thing, right? Big old ferrite motor. That's just the compression driver. And the horn goes out over to here. I mean, you see the size of that horn? Hold on. Let me move some stuff around here. Let's do it this way. All right. Here's the center channel horn, right? Look at that. I mean, it's ridiculous. And then we've got the big woofers. So I built the... The woofers are 15 inch. Uh, I can't remember what the model is. 2035 HPL, maybe? I'll, I'll, I'll double check that. But these are in about three cubic foot enclosures. I think tuned somewhere in the 50 Hertz region. I, I built them myself. And then this is a stereo integrity, four cubic foot uh, enclosure. You can see it's still got the, I was so excited. I didn't even bother to try to finish up 
uh, cleaning up this stuff. I just went straight to listening, but yeah, big stereo integrity subwoofer right there. Yep, another one right here for the left speaker. And yeah, so tons of room. And then I just got some blackout stuff for the window because there's actually a window right here. This is the upstairs bonus room. And yeah, just the frame. So nothing fancy, you know, just two inch thick foam just slung everywhere to try to knock down any kind of reflections coming off that screen. And now I'm gonna crawl back through and get up out of here. And then yeah, so I DIY'd this, this frame. <laughs> the funny thing about this frame is I, I didn't quite measure it correctly before I built it. And so it works really good on widescreen, but also full screen because it captures from the bottom all the way to the top. That's actually really funny, but in a weird way, it wound up working out quite well for me. So is that it? I really guess that's it. You know, I just kind of wanted to give you guys a, a quick tour of the theater room so you could, you know, understand what I listen to most of the time on uh, maybe not a daily basis, but on a on a more regular basis when I have the time to come up here and enjoy it. It's rare, but it's really nice when I'm able to. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So I will talk to you later. Have a good one. Peace.